Hello. Okay, so today we are going to be discussing melanoma. Um, melanoma is a deadly skin cancer. Uh, it does have high cure rates if found early. However, it can be, um, depending on the, the length of time it takes to discover it, as well as the depth of the lesions, uh, it can be fairly deadly. Um, the skin cell correlated with this condition is melanocytes, uh, which normally reside in the basal layer and are generally the same shape when they are abnormal, uh, such as the larger and of different shapes. This is uh, considered an atypical cytol cytology. Uh, there are subtypes of melanoma. These include superficial spreading type, which is the most common, uh, involves the back in men, back and legs in women, the growth of the tumor is primarily horizontal rather than down in the dermis. There is nodular type, which has a rapid growth. It is more aggressive. Uh, it is a vertical growth, uh, which results in thicker tumors. Uh, Breslow's death equals the thickness of the primary melanoma measured on histopath histopathological slides from the granular layer of the epidermis to the deepest part of the tumor, and that is one of the um, grading and classifications uh, to melanoma. There's a lentigo maligna type. This occurs on chronically sun-damaged skin, more commonly in elderly patients. It has a slow progression, and the growth is tum the growth of the tumor is primary horizontal and not vertical. There's an acrolentigenous type, lentiginous, um, more common in people with darker skin color. The diagnosis is often delayed, so the lesions tend to be larger. Uh, you want to make sure you look at the soles of the feet, make sure you're removing socks during exams um, and educating patients to look at their feet as well. And finally, there's a subungual type. Uh, this is more commonly found on the great toe or the thumb uh, with a history of trauma to the area. Um, you want to refer to dermatology if the lesion is greater than six millimeters width with a dark streak on the nail plate, is asymmetric and involves a proximal nail fold or dystrophy of the nail. Uh, there are different types of staging classifications. So we use the TNM system, so tumor lymph node and metastasis. T0 is no melanoma, cells at the primary site. TIS is superficial growth, uh, so in situ or precancer. T1, T2, T3, or T4 is an increasing in tumor size and the amount of spread. Uh, N0 for lymph node is N0 is lymph nodes that are nearby that don't contain cancer. N1, N2, or N3 is the increasing number of nearby lymph nodes affected. And finally, M is metastasis category. So M0 is no distant cancer spread. M1 is that the cancer has spread to the distant organs or tissues. And then the classifications include cumulative solar damage or CSD, which uh, breaks down into low CSD and high CSD. So low CSD is superficial spreading melanomas and high CSD is the lentigo maligna and desmoplastic melanomas. Uh, the other classification is non-solar. So this accounts for acral melanomas, some congenital nevi, melanomas in blue nevi, spitz melanomas, mucosal melanomas, and uveal melanomas. Risk factors for um, developing this condition include increasing age, having fair skin, um, blue eyes, red or blonde hair, and freckling, uh, having greater than 25 acquired nevi, uh, having atypical nevi, immunosuppression, having a personal or family history of melanoma with two or more first degree relatives, um, having excessive ultraviolet exposure. Um, and this can include uh, results in severe blistering, uh, sunburns before puberty, indoor tanning, um, and a small percentage of melanomas are familial and have a genetic basis. So the CDKN2A, CDK4, BRCA2, P53, et cetera. 
Um, manifestations of melanoma, melanoma are usually asymptomatic um, and most develop de novo. So summarize on their own and summarize within a uh, pre-existing nevus. Uh, sun exposed areas or non sun exposed areas, uh, depending on the type of melanoma, but sun exposed areas tend to have a higher rate um, of developing a melanoma. Uh, it will typically appear as a pigmented papule, plaque, or nodule, um, and it demonstrates any of the ABCs of melanoma. It may bleed, be eroded, or crusted, and there might be a history of change within the, the lesion. So diagnostics include a full skin exam. So taking a head to toe approach to the skin exam, um, which generally should, can be completed easily within a full physical exam. Uh, so women, most common sites are in the legs and the back and the men are in the back. Uh, so your ABCs, which you're looking for is A is for asymmetry. So one half the lesion is not like the other half. Uh, B is for border, so an irregular, scalloped, or poorly defined border. Uh, C is for color, which it varies from area to area, has multiple shades, can be tan, brown, black, pink, white, red, or blue. Uh, D is for diameter, so melanomas are usually greater than 6 millimeters, or the size of a pencil eraser when diagnosed, but they can be smaller. And the E is for evolving, which when you're looking at a molar skin lesion, it looks different from the rest or is changing in and of itself in size, shape, or color. Um, the next diagnostic procedure would then be a biopsy. So an excisional biopsy is the best way to diagnose a suspicious lesion. A scoop shave biopsy removes the depth and the breadth of the entire lesion and is a reasonable alternative. However, for pigmented lesions greater than four millimeters, the um, excisional biopsy is the preferred method. So prognostic factors for a primary tumor are the thickness, thickness or depth of the tumor invasion, which actually is the single most important factor uh, in regards to survival and management. Survival does decrease with increasing Breslow steps. So the deeper the tumor, the lower the survival rate. Um, ulceration of the lesion can confer a worse prognosis. And involvement on the lymph nodes or distant metastases have a worse prognosis than limited local disease. So indications for biopsy are large vessel vasculitis, uh, most pigmented lesions, deep or subcutaneous nodules, malignant neoplasms, suspected metastases, lesions larger than six millimeters, or when presumed pathology involves deep dermis or subcutis. So when performing a biopsy, you want to make sure you take a photo before and record the landmarks. Um, this is helpful for excision. Um, if you are unsure of the proper technique, make sure you call the dermatologist and ask them to look at the photo. Uh, you always want to make sure you biopsy the entire lesion when possible. Um, so that includes the breadth and the depth of the lesion plus one to two millimeters around. Uh, otherwise, it could be a false negative if you don't get the entire lesion. Uh, treatment includes... Mohs surgery, which is an excision of the lesion with its margins. There is chemotherapy. Um, it is short-term and has a low effectiveness, however. Um, medications include DTIC, temozolomide, carboplatin, or paclitaxel, or futomucetine. Um, radiation therapy is generally reserved for palliative treatment. Um, however, there are recent advances in biological therapy. So high-dose interferon and interleukin-2, BRAF inhibitors, and MEK inhibitors like Zelboraf, Tafinlar, Mechanist, and Kotelic. So... Key prevention is patient education when it comes to melanoma. So help patient understand their risk. 
Um, you can use the melanoma risk assessment tool with them and make sure you counsel them on sun safety. Uh, ensure you're integrating your skin exam into all physical exams because you can't you can't diagnose what you can't see. Um, and always make sure you can refer any concerning lesions to dermatology. Uh, so tips on protecting patient skin from the sun um, and reducing the risk of cancer. There's quite a bit of them. So seek shade when appropriate. Remember a high um, sun ray time is 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, dress to protect. Um, make sure you're wearing broad spectrum, uh, water resistant sunscreen, 30 plus F SPF. Um, make sure you're wearing it when you're outside, even on cloudy days. Um, make sure you're using caution near water, snow, and sand as they do reflect the sun's rays and can also cause significant skin damage. Avoid tanning beds. Um, it's definitely not an appropriate way to get your tan. Um, you can use a self-tanning product if you want to look tan, but continue to use sunscreen as well. Um, perform regular skin uh, self-exams to make sure you're detecting any um, abnormal lesions early. Um, teach them how to perform a self-skin exam. You can um, provide handouts uh, with all the important aspects of one. Uh, high risk patients include men over 50 who live alone. So make sure that you are providing that information specifically to them as well. Uh, patients with melanoma who have ex examined their skin in the year before, um, had thinner tumors, those are also those that are high at risk and need that education as well. And then the follow-up would contain um, most concerning for those that have a history of biopsy-proven melanomas uh, need to be followed up with a dermatologist. Um, so every six to 12 months for five years and then annually for stages um, 1A to 2A, and then every three to six months for two years, and then every three to 12 months for three years for stages 2B to 4. Um, Follow-up exams uh, consist of total body skin exams, which is scalp, genitalia, palms, soles, nails, and mucous membranes. And of course, continue to counsel on the importance of sun protection, self-skin exams, and regular follow-ups. Uh, so takeaways, melanoma is a common but deadly cancer. Um, you should be integrating a full skin exam in every routine visit. Patient education is crucial uh, to skin cancer prevention. Suspected pigmented lesions may be identified through the ABCDEs of melanoma. And suspicion or diagnosis of melanoma should prompt immediate referral to a dermatologist. Thank you.